pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community, especially Mrs. Fran Drake, who passed away unexpectedly this Monday, and for Chuck Miller, who was employed by the city's DPW department for over 38 years. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Here. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Evans. Here. Mr. Vaughn. Here. Mr. Wexler. Here. There'll be a motion to move item 5H to seventh order for a final vote. Based on the attached emergency certificate, there will be a second opportunity to speak in seventh order prior to final passage. I make a motion to correct a typographical error as found on the agenda item 5F to read through August 31st, 2018. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second on the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. Dispense with reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A minutes of the regular meetings of the Lackawanna County Land Bank held June 8 and July 20, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B tax assessor's reports for hearing dates held August 23, August 30, and September 6, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Single Tax Office City Funds Distributed Comparison Report, 2016-2017, year-to-date July 31, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, check received August 8, 2017, from Comcast in the amount of 271000 $106.87 for quarterly franchise fee payment. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E Tax Assessor's Results Report for hearing held August 2, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F Controller's Report for month ending July 31, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held July 19, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3H, minutes of the Non-Uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held July 19, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3I, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held July 19, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Three, excuse me, three J minutes of the composite pension board meeting held July 19, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Three K agenda for the non-uniform municipal pension board meeting held August 16, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Three L agenda for the city planning commission meeting held August 23, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have reports at this time? Um, I have one announcement to make. Uh, the Scranton Police Department will be hosting Fighting for Your Cure Spaghetti Dinner. Uh, it's going to be at Fratelli's Restaurant on Providence Road. It's going to be October 8th, and it's going to run through October 22nd. It's going to be 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Tickets are on sale now for $12 and include spaghetti, meatballs, salad, and bread. You can eat in or take out. Tickets are available at police headquarters or you can call 348-4139 or 558-8301. There's also t-shirts available uh, and they can be picked up at headquarters as well. And uh, like always, the, all the proceeds for this go to the American Cancer Society. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yes, I have one. Um, Mayor Shirley Barrett has announced that the uh, Archibald Borough will be organizing a Hurricane Harvey relief drive and is inviting the participation of all municipalities in Lackawanna County. This collection is made possible through Kane Trucking's uh, generous contribution of a trailer for transportation to affected victims. 
Items that will be collected are cleaning supplies such as brooms, mops, Clorox, detergents, paper towels, diapers, toilet paper, first aid kits, blankets, bed sheets, bath towels, personal care items, soap, and winter clothing. Beginning Thursday, September 7th, items may be dropped off at the trailer at the Archibald Borough Municipal Building, 400 Church Street, Archibald, weekdays between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, any municipality that needs special collections can make arrangements by calling uh, Mayor Shirley Baird or the Archibald Municipal Building. Monetary donations will also be accepted. Checks should be made payable to the American Red Cross. And if you need further information, you can call 570-876-1800. Um, I also plan on reaching out to Mayor Barrett uh, and Mayor Courtright and other city officials. We discussed this back in the caucus. Uh, so that we can be involved in this relief drive, not only for Hurricane Harvey, but uh, for the impending Hurricane Irma that is going to hit the coast of Florida uh, very soon. So hopefully we'll have something set up in the near future, and uh, the city will provide that information. Thank you. Thank you. On October 19th, 2017, at the Scranton Cultural Center, uh, there will be a program to provide information about Alzheimer's issues, including caregiving, research, early diagnosis, and clinical trials. Uh, at this event, uh, it will be attended by uh, Kim Campbell, the wife of country music singer and legend uh, Glenn Campbell. Also in attendance will be Teresa Osborne, Pennsylvania Secretary of Aging, Janine Starinsky, Oakwood Terrace Memory Care, and Nancy Lynn from Bright Focus Foundation. It'll be moderated by Jim Coles of Channel 16. And I'm, if you're familiar with uh, Mr. Campbell and his uh, battle with Alzheimer's, this should be quite an interesting uh, seminar. Fourth order, citizens participation. Faye Franis. Faye Franis, Granton. Council, when were you aware that Pennsylvania American Water wasn't taking on the $140 million unfunded projects from the sewer authority, as the mayor stated? When were you all aware of that? We, we were aware, I was aware, let me put it this way, that they were taking responsibility for the uh, balance of the work that had to be done. But, and we were told it was $140 million. But that was wrong. Not that you knew it was wrong, but you didn't know it was wrong then. Because Mayor Courtright didn't, you know, he lied about it. Do you, have you heard from the Attorney General's office regarding no, the, the only, sewer sale? No, the only update I saw was um, Mr. Kelly from the Times had been in contact with them. Uh, they have not gotten back to us at all. Do you know if Mayor Courtright or Jason Tribe has had any communication with them? No, I don't. Do you know if they've gotten any files from the Attorney General or requested any files? You don't no, know? I don't. Okay, well, like you, you, regard, you made a statement about Chris Kelly. Well, you're aware that, were you also aware that Mayor Courtwright's wife works for the Attorney General's office? Were you aware of this? I knew that, yes. Pardon me? I knew that, yes. And you don't think this is a conflict of interest? Um, that's, that's to be determined by the Attorney General, not, not us. Was, shouldn't somebody bring that to their attention? That, that would make it a conflict. I mean, they won't know that on their own. I would think that they know that, that his wife works in the office. Well, I yes. think it's a big conflict. And I also, as everybody knows, Attorney Cummings from Dunmore, who got $200,000, did, did he ever submit his bills? I, think that's, he, I think that's a different Attorney Cummings. That's his son, I believe. Isn't Attorney Cummings the one in Dunmore whose son works for the Bureau of Consumer Protection? His son the, does, yes. His son does, but Attorney Cummings is the father of the son that works for the Bureau of Consumer Protection. There's another conflict. And I asked, did you ever get the bills that he submitted for the $200,000, the lawyer fees? Did, did anybody ever get them in Dunmore? We received all the, all the invoices from the sewer transaction, yes. You got Ned Abrahamson's. Did you get, did you get the C they gave us all of the, They gave us all of the, trans, all of the bills. OK. Uh, now, the state law that I quoted July 27th, I believe, 2012, that Governor Corbett said that any money got received from a sale of a municipality like the Sewer Authority cannot be spent on any city government. And you have passed ordinances and whatever it was that you passed that allowed the mayor to pay off millions of dollars of bank loans, et cetera. And you said to me when I spoke to you, Mr. Wexler, that that was, according to your lawyer, 
and that, that it's your job to follow his advice, which I understand because you have to listen to him. But in my mind, I can't see where Home Rule Charter or any city code would supersede a state law. So what I'm asking is this. May I ask Attorney Mornor a question? No, you could ask me. Okay, then will you? Okay. I want to know what legal authority, cases, statutes that he found that backs up that statement that he, they, you are allowed to do this. And actually, I don't believe, I think it's illegal. He, he gave us a narrative before recess uh, that explained to us why he felt that way. I'd like to hear the legal, not just his opinion, a legal opinion. Where does he get it from that says that? It doesn't, it doesn't matter where he gets it from. That's the advice that he gives. I'd like, I'd like to see it. I'd like to know. I'd like the people to know where he, he, this lawyer for the city could say that the Home Rule Charter supersedes the state law and that this city council has a right to pay off loans that the state says is illegal to do unless the sewer authority is dissolved, then it is not. Now, to me, there's a great big conflict. But as, as, but as we discussed, there's a lawsuit that's going to put an end to all that. It, they, it'll either be decided that it was proper or improper. But in the meantime, I'd still like to know where Mr. Manor got his information, legal, in, legal, in writing, where it says the city could make payments when the state says that it can't. Mayor Courtright is breaking the law. And, and you keep on skirting this issue. Now, another thing, when Judge Moyle got recused from this lawsuit, you have Judge Menorah. Who's the lawyer for the city council's brother? Now, if that's not a conflict of interest, what is? So I guess somebody's going to have to challenge that. But boy, talk about connecting the dots. Cummings and his son works for the Bureau of Consumer Protection. The mayor's wife works for the Bureau, uh, attorney general's office. The lawyer for city council's brother is the judge who's going to oversee the sewer sale, the lawsuit. And then you, and you still have other things to sell, give back from the sale for the city, like the pensions, that would be illegal as well. And I don't know where you're going to get this money to replace once you find out that the state law is, you told me, Mr., one thing I want to say, Mr. Wexler, you told me that if that's proven that the state is right and the city was wrong in, in releasing this money to the city, that it wasn't illegal. If, if it's a law and you don't follow it, how could it not be illegal? That's a question I would like answered. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewan at Scranton. Um, looks like there are 61 days left to the general election on November 8th. And when last we spoke, we had a number of issues that were left uh, dangling, so to speak, almost like a dangling participle. And I think many of these issues that have not been resolved are going to impact the preparation of the 2018 budget at least the assumptions that have to be built into the budget process as, as the city um, determines uh, their numbers and figures. So in no particular order, let's go down this list of the things I just pulled from the top of my head. The double pension fiasco. Do we know where we stand with getting a release of the information on the Pennsylvania State Police report? I've discussed that <clears throat> with Attorney Menor over the recess. Um, he could probably word it a little bit better than mine, but right now it's still between Attorney Menor um, on our behalf and the state police to have an agreement drafted regarding who can and who can't see those items. Um, as I've stated, I'd like, I'd like them to be released publicly. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if Attorney Menor, you have anything to add or? Um, I'm awaiting a uh the draft of a proposed order um, from the state police. They had, they agreed uh, in spite of uh, uh, legislation contrary to allow us to look at this uh, information, but with certain restrictions. Uh, and the court felt that they would sign an order um, that was uh, conforming to state police uh, mandates so i'm awaiting that from him um I, I i will give him another call he he had been after that our last uh, court uh date uh he was on a an extended vacation for three or four weeks 
and told me he would not get back to me before then. Um, and I have not heard from him yet with uh, this, but I will call him and find out the exact point where it's at. It's just that I think this whole double pension issue is dragging on far too long from the, the date it first became public. And it also bothers me that until many of those questions are answered, the public has no assurance that there are proper internal controls uh, in place within the system so that no such disaster will happen again. Um, but that's that. Uh, the uh, council has responsibility for publishing a summary of the 2016 audit in the local newspaper. Did I miss that or has that not hit the papers yet? No, we're working on it. Okay. Be looking forward to seeing that. Um, let's see. Oh, I went to a uh, county commissioner's meeting yesterday and chief of staff Andy Wallace said that the next meeting they have on September 20th they will announce, I believe, five dates in which there will be uh, public discussions of the uh, referendum question on reassessment. And I think this uh, should engage many Scrantonians since I think we're going to have a major impact whatever happens on this question. I would hope whether or not you're going to be here next year that you will all attend one or more of these sessions. I intend to be there myself. Let's see, the Orcadis study, we never talk about that. I know it's supposed to be completed at the end of the year. Is there any chance in, you know, Hades that that thing might come out before the November 8th election and we get a sensing of stormwater management costs? I would love to see that. Uh, we'll keep on pressuring that to be done, but we don't see, have much See, I don't understand, you know, how you can put together a reasonable budget without being able to wrap your arms around uh, well, costs for that, even yeah. for just 2018. Right. Well, that as well as the garbage study that we're waiting for. And the list goes on. I saw that the third party uh, administrator, RFP, has now become the independent medical examiner coordinator, um, that they're still trying to get that going. I hope there's a plan B if they get no valid proposals the second time around because when is the money from the source sale ever going to move into the pension funds? Do you, they've lost a considerable amount of money they could have made an interest so far. And this is just stagnating. Well, you know, I mean, something's got to give. Well, that's true, but I think it was prudent on our part to wait to make sure the third party administrator was on board otherwise. Yeah. But there probably would never be a third party administrator. The, the third party administrator issue was announced in March of 2016. Oh, I, I don't disagree with that. So, you know. I mean, there, there's a reasonable way and an unreasonable. Absolutely. More next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. My name is Rebro. Good evening, Council. Lenny Cerebro, Scranton resident. Uh, here I am again with the same topic. Why can't we flush that 36 inch drain pipe? I've been fighting this, fighting, I don't know about, uh, but bringing it up for going on two years now. But this problem has existed for 20 plus years. Uh, recently, you know, I, I, I'm really appreciative that they did some paving in the neighborhood. But I'll tell you what, all that milling, all that digging up the road, guess where it's all at? Right in front of that drainage pipe. Uh, Mr. Perry, you know, you were supposed to look into why they never finished flushing that pipe last year. Um, yeah, and right now, Mr. Rebo, I'm at the exact same place where you are. I can't get a definitive answer. I've made, re I've made requests, I don't know how many times, how many weeks. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm getting the same answers oh, oh. that you are right now, which is nothing. I don't understand why after 20 years you can't get a, an answer of that. Like, isn't that regular city maintenance to flush that? 
drainage pipe? I, I think that's the question. Now is, it, is it regular city's maintenance? Because that was installed by somebody who owned that property years back. Okay. So, uh, uh, Mrs. Reed, can we get just a definitive answer from Mr. Cerebro? Is, is there any attention to the city actually taking care of this? It's just, it's just going to get on too long. I mean, Lenny owned, he, he deserves an answer to this one way or the other instead of just a, another no answer. And, thank you. You know, it might not be the answer we want, but uh, it's better than just not getting any answer. That's right. And that's, I think that's what we would, I mean, obviously we want it fixed, but if the city's not going to take ownership of it, uh, let's let's hear that out of their mouths. See, but right like now, to, we're not getting anything. I'd like to know if it's uh, the water company uh, that should be taken. At least that's right. If I can get an answer of who's responsible for that. Now, I here's totally what... Agree. Here's what happened last week. I was out of town, but when I came back, uh, one of the neighbors told me there was somebody back there, a company, trucks, they pumped out the water, that the stagnant water that lays in that pond when it doesn't uh, drain. I don't know who it was. Boy, I wish I was there. I would tell and what them. would they do? Where would they pump it? There's really nowhere to... I don't know. From See, I they, wasn't there, but they because it would have just roll right back down. I would think. Uh, yeah, I would have said that's a waste of taxpayers' money. <laughs> whoever is doing that, because the next time it rains, it's going to fill up and it's not going to go. Somebody was there last week. The neighbor said I didn't look at the name of the truck, you know, but it was a big piece of equipment that pumped. And I'm telling you, I went and I looked, and yeah, it was dry, you know, but I'm telling you that sediment from all the paving and milling, now that pipe is plug solid. If, well, we did get somebody to open it up somewhat, you know, a year ago. Right now, with the colder weather on its way, when the ground gets hard, it's gonna be a nightmare, you know. Why, like I said, I, I don't know why we can't get somebody to uh, see that was money that was wasted when it could have been used towards <laughs> up that drain. Now, I don't dispute that eventually it does drain, but like if we have an all day rain, like yesterday, and it backs up because it can't handle it, then the, the area gets flooded, it backs up now. Overnight, it does eventually drain, but in the meantime, there's all this flooding going on. Um, like I said, somebody, somebody came to flush half of it and they never came back. Why was that? Did they get paid for that whole flushing and then not come back? If you could do something to look into it. Um, Yeah, I would like to know who is responsible for that flushing. Um, okay, that's all I got to say. That drainage pipe, if something can be found out about draining it. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. I too got a comment like Faye made about our Attorney General. Yes. Good evening, Council. Good evening. My few friends out there that still talk to me. I, I enjoy reading Mr. Kelly lately with his comments about the city, but he, right under his nose, is, is this uh, behavior, is that a good word, of the mayor's wife and Mr. Cummings' son working in the attorney general's office and his failure to come to the city, there's an utmost need for him here. 
This could only happen in Scranton, I guess. What I really had on my mind tonight is about our friends at American Water again. Not, not to rehash what we've gone on for six months now, but a new revelation. Back in the 80s, the PUC, which is, I consider, another enemy of the people, the PUC granted all the utilities a carte blank on coming programs, which has resulted in uh, I'm trying to weigh my words so I won't get everybody mad at me. This has resulted in the water company, Penn Water, participating in a program for the whole state. Are you listening to me? For the whole state to put in a simple gate valve in houses starting last year. This is bills from them. You, you can't imagine what nonsense is right here. A gate valve costs 10, 15 dollars at Lowe's. You have to buy it from them, 550 dollars. Then you have to have a registered plumber put it in. And besides that, they got some nonsense it has to be inspected by a, a member of the state. This is, this is going too far. Do you know how many houses and properties in the state of Pennsylvania? And what is the, the government going to get out of this? $550 plus the, this inspection fee for everybody that's got a water meter. Yeah, it's right here. I started to make y'all copies, but I figured you wouldn't give a hoot about it, really. And besides that, I don't know what anyone can do. I guess the people of Scranton just may as well get ready for another $800,000 bust from American water. You know, it's just never going to stop with this, these people. You know, I, my friend in Little Rock told me a year ago, to buy some stock in American water. Now everybody can see why. It would never stop with these greedy people. Like I said, I, I don't know, have any idea what, what can be done about a program like this. I'm not even worried about the rest of the state. I, I, I care about the people of Scranton having to, to get involved having to participate in such utter nonsense to have a simple gate valve to keep your overflow from going back into their system from the house. Does that make sense to anybody? You, Mr. Mr. Evans, do you know what I'm talking about? This no, no, I haven't heard that before. Well, I know what you're talking about as far as the function, but I haven't heard that that's required. It's a backflow. It's just a, yeah. the water going into the house they want a backflow. It's right there on Stafford Avenue. Sent these out to people. The water will go into the house, and it won't be any backflow from your pipes into their system. This is shameful. And like I said, I, I, I just don't know what you can do about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. I guess we've had quite a productive month this uh, last month since Council was on vacation because thankfully no more damage has been done to the city since Council wasn't seated. But, um, you know, I just sitting here week after week listening to people ask questions. I think that if you have a problem with your city government, the only solution, whether it's somebody would run off on their property or whatever it may be, is to go into court 
and get a judge and a, and a hearing and proceed forward. And if you don't know how to do that, then I'd recommend that you go to the law library at the courthouse and figure out how to start filing things. I think the greatest gift, if there's any Scrantonians that really care about turning this city around, would be that instead of doing a, I, we had the Home Rule Charter Commission here at one time. Well, uh, we need some concerned citizens to come together and do some legal research and learn how to file a couple things in the courthouse and then we can solve all our problems because, you know, as Faye got up here and talked about, I guess she was talking about nepotism and interconnections inside government and not knowing, you know, exactly what's going on. Well, it's not that the courts aren't biased in many ways and uh, because they are, but there's always a right to appeal. And if case law holds up your argument, then when you get to the end, you should get relief, regardless of who the judge was prior to that. I mean, there are a lot of other instances involved in that, but you know, when you, when you have a sitting council president ask a solicitor his opinion on law, I mean, that's fine and dandy. But I think Faye asked for the statutes, not Mr. Menorah's opinion, because there's a difference. Mr. Menorah's opinion is his, and he's entitled to it, but the law is something else. And if the law says that you can't do anything, then obviously if there were a group of concerned citizens who went into court and filed something, it probably wouldn't have happened. And that's why when I watch Mr. Mulligan run for office and I ask myself, where was this man at when he could have filed something to block the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority of tons of other issues that came up in this city that he could have actually been a savior and filed something and then a lot of the silliness just would have stopped. I mean, you can just see it. It's blatant. It's right there. The laws mean something, but evidently not to people that are connected on the right level because they do whatever they want. Like the rolling condemnations through this city. I think they're illegal. I think if somebody go, went into court and filed, the taxpayers would be hauled in the back for a lot of buildings we ripped down, considering if they're not in the book upstairs. I mean, there's a lot of silliness that's taking place in this city over a very long extended period of time. And in my opinion, a lot of it's outright illegal, but it's not my job to go to court and fight everybody's battles all the time. I fight my own and I'm fairly successful. But I just think that for too long now, we've elected people who make votes on, with no idea what they're voting for. Just none. Just none. Zero. Oop. Okay, well, we'll vote for that. You know, and people come up here and ask for the same information all the time and audit this. Look at the city's bankrupt. What more is there to know? I mean, when Judge Gibbons made some of his statements about the tax situation, the city lied on this thing that they could do whatever they want because they're home rule. That didn't hold up too well, but you know, the question is here. Okay, where is all this money coming from if somebody comes in and decides that the sewer sale was illegal and you spent all the money? It's coming from the same people that used to sit in the bar and drink shots when Janet Evans used to say, okay, take a letter. I mean, that's the mentality of this city. It's beyond ridiculous. Everybody thought it was comical to watch these council meetings and get inebriated or just thought they were a comedy show. But the real comedy is the people can't pay any more taxes. And the other comedy is we've got five council members who can't get one answer and they got the power of subpoena right in their hand and they don't use it. Because you know something? I don't think you want the answers because you won't like them. And you can pursue them. You know, talking about study this and study that. Look, let's just go up to West Side and build a splash park. Everything will be beautiful. I mean, it's beyond asinine. And you represent us, we're in big trouble. And if, we, if you take a look at the Scranton School District, look at how they're doing. And then you're saying that you're educating these children in their classroom as all the funds to educate them are being siphoned off. And you wonder, is elective government really working? Maybe not. But maybe today when you go home, you need to take your cheap suit off and look at yourself in the mirror and determine what your goals actually are to represent people and make the city better or destroy the last couple remnants of it. Because, you know, the heroin problem isn't the only one we have. 
we have other problems. And I talked to a gentleman about the heroin problem in our city, and he stopped being an EMT, and he had two tours of battle in uh, Iraq. And he said hundreds of people died in the city from heroin. And now we're blaming doctors because you know something? We can't take the truth that our government has failed us in almost every way we can imagine. Thank you. Marie Schumacher. Good evening, Marie Schumacher. First, I'd like to thank Joan because I was able to knock off a few things that I wanted to bring up tonight with her follow-ups. Um, just an observation uh, that on the 3C information, the backup, our real estate and uh, business privilege and LST is down a quarter of a million dollars through July from last year. Um, I hope that's uh, being looked at. Uh, the, have we received the financial requirements and the MMO, which we had last year in September? It had come in during August. I haven't seen it. We'll probably get it soon. Uh, maybe you should follow up on that. It'd be sure. interesting to know sure. what that's going to be. We're getting close to budget time. Uh, and how does the quarterly uh, franchise fee payment of 3D uh, compare with last year's quarterly payment? Do you know, Wayne? I'm sorry. Do you know, on, on 3D, can you get how, what I, that I, compares yeah, with last year? Yeah, I have some numbers from 2016 and, and the numbers for this year. Yes, I, I'll, I'll talk about that at motions. Okay. Um, also, the number of building permits we've had now since the three-year abatement uh, between and resident split between residential and Commercial. support buildings. Yeah, we can uh, we can find that out. Okay. Uh, having trouble. Here. Oh, the capital budget. Uh, why is the Sorrenti building not on there? Where is the Youngs? And the four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we're planning to spend to make green space downtown on I would like to know if that uh, the it was ever abated from all of the uh, chemicals that are in that ground has that been done if not why are we buying it it's our responsibility and why would we take a property like that which somebody was willing to build on if it was cleaned up if the soil was cleaned up and we could be getting tax dollars. Why would we need another green space downtown? Well, I'll find out about the uh, I mean, others environmental issues. I think there were there were some abatement being done, if not completed. Uh, yes, that would be very interesting. Also, whatever happened to that trust fund that document that was going to come sooner rather than later at that meeting last spring, when they talked about the disbursement of the proceeds from the. Uh, it's all wrapped asset sale. It's all wrapped into the third party administrator being done uh, as what well, you know so that, that's the beginning of that. Once that gets done, then they can put the trust together. Okay, and the exit plan has a disability uh, pension reform. Uh, do you believe that the RFP that was recently issued uh, is compatible with the exit plan? Any it, of you? I do. yeah, I do. Uh, I would like to know. Uh, also, I'd ask you over the month of August, mm -hmm. did you get the breakdown of the impact of each of those uh, I, I recommendations? It, yeah, I sent for an answer. I haven't received it back yet. So I've asked for it, but I haven't received it back yet. Oh, yeah. could you follow up on that? Oh, that that's, absolutely, yeah. That's been a while. And in conjunction with that, I have asked you to uh, do something. I'm going to give these here um, it's the all of the recommendations and I would like you to just note I have a line for each on whether you are completely dedicated to accomplishing the recommendation or whether you disagree with or have issues with the need for the recommendation I would appreciate if you take the time to go through that and and get back to me on those I think it's very important going into this budget season on how much support those items are going to have uh, and then uh, Mr. Rogan um, I are you prepared tonight to tell us what in the heck is going on over in Southside with all the tax delinquencies on Rosen Court and Cedar Avenue? Regarding, yes, tax, regarding tax delinquencies, no, yes. it hasn't. Nothing's come across other than 
Those are UNC. Our federal tax dollars built those buildings. And, oh, and also on the lower part of uh, Alder Street. Almost all of those properties that were built. I mean, you know, one, one week you have Governor Wolf going by and saying how lovely this is, and then, uh, and then the treasurer's office or the, the county puts out the list of tax delinquencies, and almost every property there is. Well, anything run by UNC taxes. would be tax, tax freaks. They're a nonprofit. No, they're rented out to people. United Neighborhood Center does not own them. Who does? No, I, I'm a, I was asking. So, no, there are other names on there. There are yeah, ones that they sold, right. and there, yeah. yeah there's so I would like, um, yeah. I would like to we, know what is going on there. Well, just you, we, you we, haven't. We you're look, not aware of it. I'm. We could look into it, but once UNC, and again, I, I have some issues with UNC um, in other areas, but once UNC sells the property. You know they really but don't. But it's, it's there's there's something more. I just check with Linda sure. and see if she's gotten something. And if I uh, just one final thing, do we have a breakdown of that hundred and forty million dollars? What items were in that hundred and forty? Could you get that? No, the, the original hundred and forty million was part of the dissent decree. That's the number that we have. There's been some discussion on what was spent, but but that's between the water company and the sewer authority. That has nothing to do with the city. Well, it has to do with a lot. With we, the, we no, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish the sentence. With our lawyers, I understand, but with, with the lawyers, because part of that consent agreement said uh, a large portion of it, which was the, the facility itself, the improvements that were being made down there, would it complete, be completed before this sale ever went through. So if that was a total, uh, that shows lack of due diligence and it's, sloppy it's workmanship. It's just part of the whole story. It's Thank just you. part of the whole story. Anyone else? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident, taxpayer. All paid up, by the way. Um, on this uh, flooding on West Side, one thing I'd like to mention is we really need to look into the electric facility being built in West Side. Uh, make sure that they have the right retention ponds. I see an awful lot of defoliation there. I mean, it's quite a bit. So uh, I'd like to make a reading by David K. Johnston, and it pertains to Act 76, which I attended. I don't know if any, I didn't see anybody from council there, but it's constantly mentioned. And what began as an effort by Kentucky to help a single company in Appalachia raised capital by keeping state income taxes withheld from its workers' paychecks had grown to more than 2,700 companies in 19 states when his book was first published, and it's a few years old. The big banks, car makers, insurers, and a host of Canadian, Chinese, European, Japanese companies all get to profit by pocketing the taxes withheld from American workers paychecks. Since the fine print came out on hardback, two more states have joined this trend, <coughs> Oregon and Pennsylvania. Now, uh, this also pertains to city because the uh, state government never seems to have any money, extra money to compensate. And uh, a few months ago, or years ago, Joan Hodewanis brought in a, a study by Boston University that a lot of people were skimming uh, uh, sales taxes. So the point being, <clears throat> it's incumbent upon you to amend the PA Constitution first to forbid any further dole outs of tax money and then possibly even reverse this and see where we're at. Um, once again, trash fees have come up. And uh, I 
Removal, in my opinion, is as important as police and fire. In other words, if somebody drives past, say, in my neighborhood, the Jewish school, they have a lot of foul land there, and they toss a bag of garbage out of their car. It doesn't have an address on it. It doesn't have anything on it. Then DPW should pick it up because otherwise it, it'll just get spread all around the neighborhood. And furthermore, you have many people, not all of them, and certainly not a majority, but they'd be perfectly happy to toss their liabi trash liability onto somebody else's property or public property. Uh, so it's, as far as a per bag is concerned, all I want to do from my own personal perspective as a voter is pay the $300 or $270 as, as soon as I can pay it and uh, have my trash removed. And it's not really an excessive amount of trash as far as volume. Uh, I recycle everything I can. Can lids go inside the can and I bend them so they can't get out of the camp. And they're a danger. I'm, I'm sure Hugo Solinsky would just love a few can lids there <laughs> if you were sorting out your recycling. Uh, but uh, it's, we really have to stop going down the, a different road every time. When we get a system, we need to improve it and not change it uh, uh, entirely to uh, to uh, uh, more or less try something new, but it, 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 what about the new? I always wonder with elections coming up, is, are we better off with new or are we better off with somebody that hopefully learned their lesson that I haven't answered yet, you know? So thank you and have a good night. But new isn't always better. It could be less in the same package. Bye. See you next week. Anyone else? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Perry? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Wexler. Uh, it's great to be back at our regular meetings. Uh, glad to see everybody. Uh, glad to get back into uh, some of the day-to-day. -day. Uh, while, while we're gone, I know, like like all of us, uh, there were plenty of emails, most of them surrounded uh, three hot topics for me personally, which was street signs replacements uh, and maybe a better way to do that than what we've been talking about in the past, uh, pothole replacement and speeding. Uh, that seems to be the three hot topics uh, that have been coming across my desk and through my email over the last couple weeks. Uh, so with that being said, I want to thank uh, Chief Graziano for getting the speed indicator uh, moved uh, to the 2000 block of Bernie Avenue. Uh, it was much needed there. That's something that you know I've been harping on for quite some time, many weeks, about the speeding there. Uh, I'm hoping that's going to do something to uh, one or two things. It's going to curtail some of the speeding that's happening there, and two, it's going to actually give uh, PennDOT and the city police a good record of what's happening on that street because it just it, it just, it's, it's as bad as I say it is, and that's, that's the truth. And I know we all have speeding in our neighborhoods, and this is one of those streets where uh, it's, it's no different. It's, it's, not, it's not good at all. Uh, and I'm still hoping that, uh, coupled with that, we still get that crosswalk that uh, between myself, Councilman Gahan, uh, Director Gallagher, uh, and PennDOT, in that type of unity, we get, once that street's paved, we get some kind of uh, crosswalk uh, between the 28, 2900 block of Bernie Avenue, which directs the kids from the other side of Bernie, the, I guess you could say the west side of Bernie Avenue, down to Barrett Park and the Little League field, soccer field. Uh, it's, it's definitely much needed. Uh, with that said, I'm still waiting on uh, the new uh, Rockwell Bridge section of the city. Uh, I haven't gotten any response back about uh, changing some of maybe the speed limit or the traffic uh, patterns or traffic uh, signage there just to warn people about the speeding and the dangers there. Uh, again, to use the word curtail, we have to slow down speeders and that's something when that bridge opened up we were kind of aware of that that was going to just 
you know, people weren't used to that bridge being open and it's such heavily trafficked by, you know, not only by bikes, but by walkers and by a lot of young kids. Uh, so we're still working on that. Uh, a couple items that are gonna come up on the agenda tonight, 5H, uh, is going to be paving uh, that has the emergency certificate attached to it. Uh, one of the reasons, well, the reason why the uh, certificate is attached is so we can get this stuff done in time uh, before the winter weather hits. Uh, where they're going to be paving in East Mountain, Green Ridge, the downtown area, North Grant and West Grant. And I'm very happy to say South, at, South Irving Street and Southside uh, from Palm to Cherry. That was something that was a very, very... <laughs> I mean, a poor go is, is to say the least. I'm sure anybody who's familiar with our meetings uh, can remember the, the speakers that talk about it. Anybody familiar with that area knows uh, what that street's like, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, I just want to throw a thank you out to uh, Toyota Scranton, who's part of 5G, who's going to be donating a command car to the uh, Scranton Police Department. Uh, we've had a great, uh, great relationship with Toyota Scranton. They've been very generous to us in the past with motorcycles and other donations. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to see us continue that, that partnership of private and public sector. Uh, and finally, for tonight, 5B, uh, there is going to be uh, some grant money and rebate money used for uh, a much needed fire truck. Uh, it's a little over $400,000. Uh, there's going to be a big chunk used from uh, Department of Economic uh, Development and then a rebate from PPL, uh, about $134,000. That's the money allocated uh, that came down from Business Administrator Balsoni. And, you know, I'm sure we can discuss that and go forward with that in, in a couple of readings. Uh, but other than that, I just also want to throw a big thank you to the uh, Italian Festival Committee. They did a great job. Uh, DPW for getting the place cleaned up very quickly. and. Uh, the police department for keeping things safe. Uh, that's all I have for this week. Thank you, Mr. Wexler. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Mr. Rogan? Yes. <clears throat> I may echo much of what Mr. Perry uh, mentioned, and it feels, does feel great to be back um, at our regular meetings. Um, through the recess, we've all attended a number of events, but one I do want to mention um, in particular was the Bob McGough Memorial uh, Walk Run, which was the second annual event. Um, and I just want to thank the uh, Southside group, the Connors Park group that, that put that together. It was a extremely well attended event and a fitting memorial for uh, our friend and colleague, Bob McGough. Um, so I want to thank them for, for everything they did putting that event together. Um, and I do want to also thank our colleague, uh, Mr. Evans, for putting together shirts for, uh, for the entire city council. So we thank him for that as well. Um, I know Councilman Perry mentioned the paving project a little bit. I do want to talk a little bit more about that since um, out of all the agenda items tonight, this is the one that's probably going to impact the most people in the city. Fortunately, the state has already begun paving a number of roads throughout the city as well that you may have noticed. Um, the majority of those are state roads. So the, that has been progressing in, in different sections of the city. And the biggest complaint over my time on council by far is the condition of streets. Um, so the paving that we're going to vote on tonight is about $1.3 million worth of paving that will take place um, during this fall, so very shortly. And uh, Councilman Perry mentioned the sections. I want to mention the streets as well because almost all of these streets on here we've heard numerous complaints from. Um, so on East Mountain, Leslie Drive, Watrous Drive, Rhonda Drive, Penny Bryn Drive, Debbie Drive, Laurel Drive, Karen Drive, Blucher Avenue, and Wintermantle Avenue, which is in deplorable condition, um, they are all on the paving list. In Green Ridge, North Washington Avenue from Richmond Street to Marion Street, and Columbia Street from Kapaus to North Washington. In the downtown, Dix Court, Forest Court, part of Olive Street and North 7th Avenue um, will be paved. In North Scranton, Court Street from Diamond Street to Albright Avenue. In West Scranton, both 4th and 5th Avenue will be paved from Broadway to Luzerne Street. Price Street from Newton Road to Kaiser Avenue. Frank Street from Kaiser Avenue to the Turnpike. Briggs Street from Kaiser Ave to North Horatio Ave. All of Oakwood Estates will be paved. Swetland Street, North Horatio Ave, Jackson Street from Kaiser to Dewey. And as Councilman Perry mentioned, probably one of the worst streets in the city is South Irving from Palm to Cherry. 
So that is what $1.3 million gets you as far as paving goes. It sounds like a good amount of streets, but there's so much more that needs to be done as far as road paving. Um, also this week on the road paving front, bids were opened for the spring paving project. This is through um, the Office of Economic and Community Development, so it can only be done in certain areas in the city. So this is in uh, the spring of, the spring paving project includes Larch Street, Emmett Street, 4th Street, 5th Street, um, Dartmouth, Bryn Mawr, Woods Place, Wolf Court, Amherst Street, Cornell Street, and East Park Avenue. Um, again, number of streets that, that desperately need to be paved, and those bids were just opened yesterday, which was uh, September 6th, and it does look, there was four bids that were put in. Um, American Asphalt and Paving out of Shavertown was the lowest bidder for uh, $584,000. So between what we're voting on tonight and the, what the bids were open for yesterday, um, that represents about $1.8 million in paving. Hopefully it will make a dent in um, the, the deplorable conditions of the, the roads in the city of Scranton. Um, so I'm looking forward to voting on both of these projects. And just wanna make a mention, although it's not a Scranton issue, I do wanna send our thoughts and prayers to those in Houston who were affected by Hurricane Harvey and uh, those in Florida who um, are bracing for Hurricane Irma. It's uh, very scary. One thing that we're fortunate in our area is that we do not get hurricanes. Um, just couldn't even imagine what, what those uh, individuals are going through right now. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Mr. Evans? Thank you. Like all of my fellow councilmen, I remain fairly busy during our August recess. I met and corresponded more than a dozen times with various department heads and uh, on different issues that came up during the, the month, as well as our uh, weekly PEL meetings held uh, in City Hall. I attended a Scranton Parking Authority meeting and let my dissatisfaction be known about the proposed rate increases for the parking garages for preferred, for par excuse me, for preferred parking as well as the increase within the downtown merchants voucher program. I offered suggestions to reduce rates and increase occupancy, as well as discussed opportunities for traditional on or more additional on-street parking in the downtown, among other things. I anticipate talks that must and will continue with ABM and NDC, because I feel at this point they're simply not understanding the message myself and others are trying to get across to them. I also attended a Lackawanna County Commissioner's meeting to express my opposition in person to the ballot question on reassessment. I reinforced my opinion again that the idea of a ballot question uh, being against that because I feel it is still the responsibility of the commissioners to make that decision and I'm against the question itself because it's clearly worded in such a way that as to promote a no vote against reassessment. I also offered the suggestion that they postpone the ballot question until spring 2018 in the primary election to allow for more time to appropriately educate the public on what it, reassessment means to them. Of course, that was rejected as well. While I'm on the discussing the uh, re topic of assessment, I'm gonna veer slightly from my uh, August recess report. I was communicating with B.A. Bozzoni today about the latest assessment numbers for the city of Scranton. For the 2016 budget year, the land assessment was 91 million $95,820. Improvements was $300,609,636. For the 2017 budget, the valuations are land, $90,609,077. Improvements, $300,027,585. Our assessed valuations continue to trend downward every year. In fact, this year it's over $1 million in assessed value that we've lost. This certainly is another indicator of a need for a reassessment, as well as an indicator of an extraordinary amount of property assessment appeals, and of course an environment that simply does not foster growth. Additionally, the assessed valuations on tax exempt properties are land $25,668,955, on improvements $193,467,000. $777. To me, those numbers are astounding. Taxes and property is approximately 65% of our taxable valuation. This scenario is just not sustainable. 
and must be addressed somehow, some way. We currently have no pilot payment in lieu of taxes agreements in place with any of the nonprofits. And the city has not attempted, as I have previously suggested, to challenge the nonprofits to support their tax exempt status on all of their parcels. To say it's frustrating would be an understatement. Now, if I may, I'm going to go back to the August recess. Uh, Council President Wexler and I participated in a Hill Neighborhood Association meeting with our other city leaders and the University of Scranton representatives to discuss ongoing problems with large off-campus parties. Some progress was made and future meetings will occur to continue to work toward a resolution that would be satisfactory to the residents that live nearby. Also during our recess, City Council had the honor of giving out the first annual City Council Cup to the winners of a three road race running series. The award was given at the final race, which happened to be the Bob McGough Memorial 5K, which honors the memory of our friend and colleague, Councilman Bob McGough, as does the City Council Cup. The winners were Kevin Borelli in the men's category and Kristen Pellis in the women's category. Prize money was awarded the winners of the City Council Cup, and for the record, that money was a private donation and no public funds were used in any way to support the City Council Cup just in case inquiring minds wanted to know that. And finally, I spent part of four days over the Labor Day weekend at La Festa Italiana. Despite a couple of days of so-so weather, it finished on a high note with absolutely beautiful weather on Monday, Labor Day. On Labor Day, my wife and I joined a large crowd listening to music at La Festa, while also joining the ranks of many senior citizens by bringing our own folding chairs for the entertainment on Linden Street. We spent most of the afternoon and into the early evening there, and it was a great an enjoyable day with some terrific music by some very talented musicians and of course more great food. In my opinion, La Festa is something we should all be very, very proud of as Scrantonians. Year in and year out, it certainly shows off our city in a very positive way. So I would like to congratulate the committee and all the vendors, musicians, and everyone else involved for making La Festa once again a truly remarkable family event for everyone. That's all I have for tonight. Tonight, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Gauhan? Yes, thank you. Uh, welcome back. I have a uh, lot to say tonight, so buckle up. <laughs> um, I first just want to start off by um, thanking Mr. Miller, as uh, Mr. Council President Wexler did in the beginning of the meeting, uh, who served 38 years with the Department of Public Works and who recently passed away. Um, 38 years in any job is significant, and I think it's uh, noteworthy. And the fact that uh, Mr. Miller, who was liked by uh, many people and well-known, uh, spent 38 years of service at the DPW speaks volumes. So my prayers go out uh, to him and his family uh, at this difficult time. The second thing that I have to mention is Council President Wexer uh, mentioned in the beginning of the meeting Fran Drake. Um, Fran Drake passed away recently, uh, suddenly. She worked in City Hall. I worked with Fran uh, for quite some time, and um, it was a major loss, not only to her family, all of her friends, and everybody that knew her. When I worked with Fran um, in the Office of Economic and Community Development, uh, she was one of the first people that greeted me uh, when I started to work uh, for that office. She was a genuinely nice person. Uh, she had a great sense of humor. And it was a shock to hear that news, and she will definitely be missed, and my prayers go out to, to Fran and, and her family at this time. I also want to extend my prayers, as I did in the beginning of the meeting tonight, uh, to those who are affected by uh, Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, uh, the mayor of Archibald is organizing a Hurricane Harvey relief drive. Uh, so I'm going to make an effort to make sure that the city of Scranton gets involved in that um, and, and takes sort of the lead with Archibald on that. Uh, so hopefully we'll have more information uh, next week. I read an interesting article this morning uh, that Amazon, who is the uh, giant online retailer, uh, they employ nearly 350,000 people in the United States and they launched a search for a second headquarters in North America. So they want to build a second headquarters. Their first headquarters is out in Seattle, Washington. And they plan on employing uh, up to 50,000 people with the average salary being around $100,000.
Amazon is soliciting pitches from cities and states across the country. Um, if the city would like Amazon, I'm sure any city would, to come and build their headquarters uh, at a site. Proposals are due by October 19th. There is an RFP, I read the RFP today, and I really do believe that the city of Scranton uh, should be the leader on this and should submit a proposal and should submit a pitch to Amazon. Amazon is going to put nearly $5 billion investment into the community which they choose to build this headquarters. Now, it may be a pipe dream, I'm not sure, but the worst thing that they could say is no. And I think the second effect that it will have if we take the lead on this with the Chamber of Commerce and uh, the county, other individuals, is that it will give the city of Scranton good press, that we're going to go out and we're going to tell our story. And we are going to try to get a major corporation to come in here into our community and to invest in us if we invest in them. Um, when I read the article, I thought, why not the city of Scranton? Why not us? When I look across the United States, I see that most of the jobs now are in the uh, technology sector. So I think that this is a great opportunity. We have a great labor force. Uh, our location is ideal, two hours from New York City, two hours from Philadelphia, four hours from Boston and, and Washington, D.C. Um, so I think that we need to aggressively pursue this, and I, I plan on uh, making a pitch to the uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow and I will update everybody next week and hopefully uh, they get on board with this because I think we need to promote ourselves more uh, to the outside world. Um, second uh, point, and it's an item that's on our agenda tonight, is the Laceworks project. Uh, on our agenda, we are simply correcting a typographical error, uh, but it is relevant because during the August recess, I have heard from numerous residents uh, in the area of the Laceworks building who are seriously concerned um, about the property. Uh, the maintenance of the property, the grass, um, broken windows in the building, and one of the biggest concerns is access to the building. The buildings are pretty much wide open. Um, and coincidentally, in the newspaper this morning, uh, there was an article about three teenagers uh, that were caught in one of the buildings at the Scranton Lace Factory um, with gasoline and other things, and it looked like they were going to commit arson. So. I think the neighbors have a serious uh, issue here and a legitimate one. Um, I want to thank the police department because when we brought this uh, to Chief Graziano's attention, uh, Mrs. Reed and I, uh, they were very quick to up patrols in that area and they did start to catch uh, vandals and, and other, other issues. Um, my concern is that the developers and the owners of the property really should be providing security um, at that property, whether it be uh, more fencing around the perimeter uh, or I think 24-7 security because we're wasting our resources continually going in there and uh, catching people and the neighbors are continuously concerned. So um, we did discuss it in caucus. We are going to ask the developers to provide number one an update on where we are since we did give a tax abatement uh, a few months ago and number two we are going to inquire about what they plan on doing with security and, and maintenance of the property. And uh, I'm going to make the suggestion that uh, they either hire security or do something, because something has to be done. Um, the Civil War Museum in the basement of City Hall, we discussed that uh, in caucus. I brought this up numerous times. I am concerned that uh, the Civil War Museum is going to be asked to leave the basement of City Hall, uh, because apparently the mayor is looking for more storage space. I have uh, spoken to several members of uh, the museum, uh, which is located in the basement, as I mentioned. Um, their lease is up this November, and I would like to see if uh, we could uh, renew that lease, whether it be for five years or ten years. It was a ten-year lease started back in 2007. Um, for the simple fact that I think it's unique uh, that we have a Civil War museum with those type of artifacts in uh, our building here, and I think we should do more uh, to promote that. We also discussed uh, Nayog Park, uh, received a few complaints about parking concerns. Uh, some of the parking lots are being used by um, employees of the hospital, so uh, we were going to take a look at uh, that issue, so we'll follow up on that next week. Um, Councilman Wexler informed us, and, and I've been asking about this for quite some time, uh, that we have a public caucus with uh, NDC and ABM 
Uh, so Councilman Wexler informed us that he is working on uh, setting that meeting up. Uh, obviously there are questions and there are concerns and I think that we do need an update on not only the uh, any progress that has been made but uh, where we're going in in the future especially in 2018. Uh, there, I received a few complaints about signage issues on East Parker Street so forwarded them to the um, licensing and inspection department and the chief of police. Uh, there was a major issue with a block storm drain um, in the corner of the 600 block of McDonough Avenue uh, in the Manuka section. Uh, the storm drain is filling with water because it is blocked and the water is causing uh, deterioration to the neighbor's property. So we're waiting uh, for an answer and some action on that and we'll follow up next week. Um, as for the, it was in the paper when we were on recess about the possible, the mayor wants to do a possible study on replacing the street signs throughout the city. Um, I tend to disagree on this point with uh, the mayor. I do not think that we need a study uh, determ to determine how to best uh, replace the faded uh, street signs and stop signs throughout the city. We may look for a grant for money to do that, but I don't think we need a study to know how to do it. Um, we currently have, I think it's one employee uh, who knows how to make the signs and, and do all that kind of stuff. I know that the uh, sign department in DPW has been decimated over the years, but I do really believe that if we make it a priority, if we maybe put some casual employees uh, on that task with the gentleman that um, is in that department, um, I think that we can go neighborhood by neighborhood, starting with uh, where the signs are faded the worst and then work our way up. So I don't think that we need to wait for a study that'll take too long and um, the woman, she's not here tonight, uh, the resident who is from the Hill section, obviously that is one of the worst areas for either no street signs or faded street signs. Um, well, after about six or seven months, we're still talking about the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority. And I have to be honest, it is almost unimaginable at this point uh, that I'm sitting up here tonight and we are still talking about it. It is still being brought up. Um, I think that there is still a black cloud. There is still unanswered questions that are hanging over this deal. And after reading some of the newest developments in the newspaper while we were on uh, recess over the past month, it's pretty clear to me that the sale of the sewer authority, it seemed like one big party, except we were not invited to it. The ratepayers and the taxpayers weren't invited. We received information today, and I did not have a chance to review it. Councilman Evans and I have been asking for months now for information related to uh, money that was spent during the time of uh, the sale. And uh, Mr. Schreib did send us a letter, and I just want to read uh, what he wrote here briefly. Um, in response to your request for information with regard to the capital spending of the Scranton Sewer Authority prior to the close of the asset sale transaction, in its relation to mandated projects under the consent decree and biological nutrient reduction projects, I provided the enclosed analysis. This analysis was compiled based upon a review of a large amount of data regarding the long-term control plan projects and the Scranton Sewer Authority spending associated with the same. I was assisted with the review of this data and the preparation of this analysis by HJA Strategies, which is Henry Amoroso. So it's quite a few uh, pages, it's a large document. I wanna thank um, Attorney Shrive for getting us, finally getting this, us this information after many months, and I do plan on reviewing that. One of the things that is concerning is the amount of time that it took to get this information. Uh, we were stonewalled for quite some time, and that is very concerning. I would like an update uh, in writing, uh, as was mentioned here tonight from one of the speakers, uh, from the Attorney General's office on the status of their potential review of the Scranton Sewer Authority deal. The last that Council heard, as uh, Councilman Wexer mentioned, was that they forwarded uh, our request to the Bureau of Consumer Protection. Now, as the newspaper reported recently, the Deputy Attorney General in charge of the Bureau of Consumer Protection in, Scranton, in the Scranton office is uh, Thomas P. Cummings III, who is the son of Tom Cummings, the Dunmore solicitor, who apparently, according to a Scranton Times article, slaved over the Scranton Sewer Authority deal every day but Christmas. I really couldn't make this thing up if I tried. I couldn't even dream it up if I tried. Tom Cummings, the Dunmore solicitor, said recently in a Times article that he was looking through his calendar in the single day in 2016 that he was not actively involved 
in reading documents via email and responding to situations related to the Scranton Sewer Authority deal was literally Christmas Day. Those are his actual words. I would like to request a copy of that calendar and I believe we're entitled to that information because the taxpayers and ratepayers of Scranton picked up 80% of Mr. Cummings' $200,000 in legal bills. Mr. Cummings would also not comment about whether he would produce itemized bills. What a surprise. When I mention this information and speakers bring it up, I often think, is it any wonder why people in this region, why people in this city are so apathetic towards their government? I would also like an update, Mrs. Reed, if we could, on the Scranton Sewer Authority's insurance policy. And my basic question is, do they have one? In a July 31st letter, the Sewer Authority's insurer pulled its coverage uh, because the sale appears to violate the Pennsylvania Municip Municipal Authorities Act, which apparently forbids such a transaction, among many other things. So I have a few questions for Mayor Courtright and Attorney Shrive. Number one, why was there a lack of clear, clearly communicated underwriting information on part of the authority, which resulted in confusion as to what was sold and what was retained pertaining to the stormwater lines? Number two, I'd like a, an update on the status of the easements. In the July 31st letter, the insurer was a, apparently unaware of easement issues. My second question is how could that be? And finally, the insurer was not paid in seven months since the policy was issued. Why was that? And finally, as I mentioned, does the authority have insurance? If it doesn't have insurance, what effect does that have on the sewer authority? I sent a letter in July uh, to the mayor with specific questions as to why the authority was never dissolved. No answer, no surprise. If, in fact, there was a violation of the Municipal Authorities Act, which is now playing out apparently in the courtroom, what happens if we have to pay that money back? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I've also asked for an update on the trust uh, for the sewer authority money that is supposed to be put into the pensions. That seems to be dragging. I know it's because of the, apparently because of the third party administrator, but I would like an update in writing. I'm also still awaiting a response from the city controller on whether or not the city violated the administrative code uh, by arbitrarily hiring Ned Abrahamson without a contract for $200,000 as special counsel to the sewer authority deal and $200,000 for the parking authority deal. So Mrs. Reed, I would like us to send another update. Uh, Mrs. Novembrino was quoted in the paper, I believe it was in July, saying that she was going to look into that. She wasn't sure, so um, I would like an answer on that. I'd like to send another letter urging the Scranton Sewer Authority Board to reconsider their stance on denying allowing the Auditor General the ability to come in and examine the Scranton Sewer Authority deal. No matter where I go, people talk about this deal and why the Auditor General was not allowed to come in by this board, the Scranton Sewer Authority Board. So I think it is incumbent upon them to bring that up again and put this to bed once and for all. Finally. Uh, what really astonishes me, and again, I say this, I couldn't make this up if I tried, is the response or lack thereof from the mayor of this city, Bill Courtright. Mayor Courtright was actually quoted in the newspaper recently as saying, I have to trust the lawyers. I have to trust the lawyers. Well, if that is the case, if that's the case, then that is the most horrifying statement I've heard in a long time coming from an elected official in this city. If that's the case and we have to trust the lawyers, then I think we're in a lot of trouble. Who is running this city is my question. I've been asking this for a long time. Is it the mayor or is it his army of politically connected lawyers? I think it remains to be seen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guyon. Um, really just to summarize what was just said, we've been asking these questions all along and, and I agree that the error was made when the sewer authority did not request that the auditor general to come in. Uh, we've seen that we've made our request to the attorney general. They forwarded to the consumer protection board. I'm not sure what really is going to come out of that. Uh, but I also would recommend that the sewer authority reconsider um, their no vote and let the auditor general come in. That is a truly the only way that we're going to get into this because, as as was stated. Uh, we're getting questions and questions and answers and answers, but 
we're getting answers, but nowhere is this being all put together to come to any resolution. Um, right now, I'm not sure what recourse is going to be available to us when these answers come in. Um, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a recourse anywhere to get a positive um, conclusion to this sale. The only thing that I can say that is positive from the sale is the amount of long-term debt that we've retired. There's no arguing that that has that has been done. Um, in January, when the new budget goes into place, it's going to be cons considerably impacted in a positive way by the amount of debt that has been reduced. Um, there's no denying that. Uh, we have a lot of questions about what happened and what didn't happen. There is no denying that at, at this point, the sewer authority sale had a positive impact on the city's budget. Um, the discrepancy between the $140 million that was part of the dissent decree um, when the sewer authority or the water company took it over, is it down to $105 million? Once again, that's up for conjecture. Um, it, it does not relieve the fact that that $140 million original bill was going to have to be paid by the ratepayers. There's no, that you can't deny. There's no question about that. So somewhere along the line, that bill was going to have to be paid. I know for myself, I'm, I'm leaving council come, uh, come January. Uh, and I would recommend that we get to a point where we try to get all these answers done and, and put this portion of this uh, history of the city behind us. Um, there's no denying that the sewer authority had to be sold. There's no way that the city of Scranton would have made it to 2018 without the sale of the sewer authority. Um, there's no, we, we're looking at, we're hearing we can't raise taxes anymore. We can't really cut services much anymore. The only way that we could survive is to use the money that we had to pay off long-term debt and, and reduce our, our, that part of our budget item. The question regarding the, um, the consent decree amount are the rate increases that have been guaranteed. Now that's the question. The rate increases that have been guaranteed, um, that, that's going to impact that. Is that a, as good a deal as it was described to us as? Uh, only, only time will tell with that. But I, uh, logically, I can't see how the sale of the sewer authority can be looked at as something that should not have happened. Should it have happened in a different way? Maybe. Um, the, the problem for city council is we're here every Thursday answering the questions. Um, the mayor is not exposed to these questions. Uh, sewer authority is not exposed to these questions. City council is exposed to these questions. And we've been trying to get the answers for this. Um, and we, we get them in little by little by little by little. Um, but hopefully at some point we can get answers and wrap this up. But I, I don't see how, how there's going to be a, a resolution that the people of the, of the city are going to be happy with. There's no money. I don't see any money being returned by the lawyers. I don't see any money being returned to the city by the water company. Uh, hopefully that's, that, that's not the case, but at some point this, this debate has to come to an end. Has to come to an end. Um, i uh, happy to support Mr. Gauhan and his, his idea to use Scranton, uh, suggest this to Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be successful, but just the fact that it'll be something for the city, uh, the, the whole area to work on together, to put a package together to market us. I think, as was stated, um, Scranton and the area is very hard on itself. I, we have a tendency to believe that we're not as good as we think we are, unless somebody picks on us from the outside. Then we're all come together. Um, but I see something similar that was done a few years ago when trying to attract the Saturn plant and also the effort to save the Toby Hanna Army Depot when the communities all came together and, and pitched the area as one. And I hope that is something that we can get together with the chamber and the rest of the uh, economic development groups in the area. Uh, in regards to uh, the stop signs, I think the one thing, and this is a problem I think happens in the city a lot, is we, we go to look for a grant. Um, in my business where we come from and we want to do a project, we have to establish the cost first. Um, that's what has to happen first, is how much it's actually going to cost to replace the street signs in the city. Um, someone made an estimate based upon what it cost a few years ago, but who knows, um, the, the production of signs and technology now for printing stuff like that is much less than it was all those years ago. Uh, I actually think that if we establish the cost, then we can develop a three or four year plan 
to replace the street signs in the city and also have a maintenance program um, to, to continue that. Um, just to touch base on some of the things that occurred over the, over the break for me, as Mr. Evans said, we did attend a meeting at, with the University of Scranton and the members of the Hill Neighborhood Association. Um, the University of Scranton came out. They were very receptive to the neighbors uh, and they are trying to implement uh, a plan um, in terms of the bigger parties up at the University of Scranton. Uh, we have problems on parade day and we have problems on this uh, return in July party. And those are things that have to be corrected. The neighbors have a huge investment in their properties up there as do the University of Scranton. And there has to be a way for those people to coexist up there. Um, Councilman Rogan and I were in touch with PennDOT while they were paving uh, Music Street. Um, there was some drainage problems alongside Route 307. Uh, the city raised the, man, the, um, the grates for the paving project. Uh, we are keeping our eye on that because there is one location on the corner of Conroy and, and, uh, and uh, I forgot the street, uh, no. and Snook Street, thank you. Um, that, that's quite dangerous and we are keeping our eye on that to make sure that when, this is, when the road is complete that that problem is corrected. And uh, Mr. Rogan spoke with PennDOT and they were quite receptive to uh, making it uh, work properly. And that's all I have. 5B, for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 65, 2016, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2017 by transferring $464,861.26 from account number as noted, miscellaneous revenue other not classified, to account number as noted, Department of Public Safety, Bureau of Fire, capital expenditures by increasing funding in the above revenue and corresponding expense accounts to utilize additional revenue received from DCED LSA grants for aerial fire truck and PPL commercial rebate program act 129 funds at this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved. second <clears throat> on the question all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So moved. 5C for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 107, 2017, an ordinance entitled Approving the Transfer of a Restaurant Liquor License Currently Owned by Joan Hudak Trading Doing Business as Seven Sisters Tavern, 814 Susquehanna Avenue, Oliphant, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, license number R-3527 to CFM Beer Brick LLC for use at 337 West Market Street, Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board to correct a typographical error in the liquor license number in the second whereas clause and the now therefore clause to read liquor license number R-3527. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to item 5C be introduced into his proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. So moved. 5D for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 60, 2016, an ordinance entitled Granting Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance to a property located at Albright and Glen Avenues and identified as PIN numbers as noted owned by Lace Building Affiliates LP and setting forth amounts of tax abatements for each year for 10 years for the sole purpose to correct the file of the council number in the second whereas clause to file of the council number 37. At this time, I'll entertain a motion item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So moved. 5E for introduction and ordinance approving and accepting the City of Scranton capital budget for the year 2018 pursuant to section 904 of the City's Home Rule Charter. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So moved. I make a motion to authorize. <coughs> Excuse me. To authorize the city clerk to place a legal notice in the newspaper summarizing the proposed capital budget and to include locations where copies of the capital budget can be viewed by the public. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second on the question. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. I make a motion that we schedule a public hearing for the capital budget to be held Thursday, September 21st, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second on the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. 5F, for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with a and Electrical Construction Incorporated to provide maintenance of traffic signalization for the city of Scranton for the period of one year from September 1, 2017 through August 31, 2018. At this time, I'll entertain a motion item 5F be introduced to its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. 5G, for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into an agreement setting forth the terms and conditions by and between the city of Scranton and Toyota of Scranton Incorporated to accept the donation of a new Toyota Camry to be used by the Scranton Police Department as a supervisor's car. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. 5H, for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Pensy Supply Incorporated for City of Scranton 2017 paving project. Emergency certificate attached. At this time, I'll entertain a motion item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? <clears throat> Yes, on the question. Uh, two things. Um, first, I was contacted by a gentleman uh, who lives on Leslie Drive uh, regarding the upcoming paving. Um, his concern is that water coming down from Penny, Bin Penny Bryn Drive uh, ends up at his property. Uh, during the heavy storms, the water overflows uh, the curb on his property, which is causing damage to his foundation and erosion to the bank in the back of his house. Um, so what he would like to do is talk to somebody from the engineering department or the DPW before paving commences uh, to make sure that when they pave, the water is diverted um, into the storm drain. So uh, Mrs. Reed sent a letter to Mr. Gallagher and copied the mayor, Mr. Potius, and council on it. Um, so hopefully we can get that resolved uh, before the paving begins. Um, I'm going to vote for this because I, I think everybody knows we need paving. Uh, but I do take issue with one thing, and I've said this before. I do not think this is an emergency. I don't agree with the emergency certificate being attached. We are essentially circumventing, in, in my opinion, the legislative process when an emer a true emergency does not exist. If you looked up emergency in the dictionary, I don't think trying to start a paving project would constitute as an actual emergency. Is it an inconvenience? Yes. But that this isn't our fault that we got the... Um, legislation in September um, and I do believe that this administration has used the emergency certificate way too much I've seen times over the past four years where an emergency certificate has come down and I didn't believe an emergency certificate or an emergency uh, an emergency was actually constituted so I just want to bring that up because I do believe that um, if you're looking at the legislative process people should have the ability um, to review this information. Um, this is a pretty simple piece of legislation, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I provided that objection. Thank you. Yeah, on, on the question, um, I just would like to make, make, make it known that an emergency is, uh, the mayor is the um, executive leader of the city. Um, the mayor decides what he thinks is an emergency. The controller has to agree upon it. Um, I use the term as a, an emergency is something that not a, preventing an emergency as of right now, but an emergency down the road. Uh, if mm -hmm. another week we had paving, we know we've had problems with snow in October. Um, so I would like, in my case, this the emergency is getting it done and getting it ready to go. Um, it may have been used too much in the past, but in this particular case, uh, this is something that I'd like to get going before the weather's been so crazy lately. Hopefully, uh, we've seen seen the worst what might be coming our way, but I, I don't agree that this is not an emergency. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, so moved. 
I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 5H to seventh order for a final vote based on the attached emergency certificate. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it, so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Uh, if anyone would like to address council on emergency legislation, you may do so at this time. Uh, first of all, the obvious, uh, the emergency categorization again i think uh, this council or the term of this council has set a record for uh, emergency certificates and i i, I think it's sad but uh, what is more important to me is whether or not we have truly and something signed by the gas company and the power company that none of these roads are planned for any major changes in lines other than you know a problem i i would really like whoever is in charge of of the uh, of the paving problem uh, programs or dpw to get to look back over what were do what was done last year and see how many of them have been torn up the 700 block of prescott avenue is a disaster area i will not even go down it and that was just paved last year uh i i could name i i think over 50 percent i'd be willing to bet and we were assured that oh all that was taken care of mm -hmm. i would like before this is given the green light that we get something in writing from the major utilities, the gas company and the electric company, just the, the paving on, on, um, on Music Street, just a perfect example. The binder level layer is down, and already there are, are uh, utility signs there, are, you know, put markings that they have to do work there. Hopefully they'll be done before they put the, yeah. the final layer on. Well, they, were, they were digging but, today. Yeah. Oh, were they? Yeah. Oh, good. It was the traffic was so jammed yeah. up. I went down and went around it. But uh, and the other thing is, I I had challenged all of you uh, after I I went and looked at all those roads on the East Mountain, and I had challenged you to go and and look at them. I don't know if any of you did. I I can't believe that you did, because those are not only um, not really needy. There, are, I I would wonder I, I should have counted if there were any potholes that had been filled but there are so many roads on the east mountain that are so much worse that are and not only that the condition but how the utilization of those roads uh, east mountain lake road is there are places where the road just disappears for a little bit you know 20 feet um, east elm street and it causes us, Mr. Shrebro said it tonight, to waste money. We, East Elm Street, thank goodness, for the second time this year, the, uh, the potholes were, were filled between the uh, Howard Gardner School and Derby Avenue, but the second time. That tells you something. We did it once, they're gonna wash out again, we'll do it a third time. I believe there's a spring under that road. Uh, it's not being done right. Seymour Avenue is a mess between whatever that last year, Roosevelt Avenue and 307. The utility companies are always either on one of those two streets. They haven't finished at the bottom. And, and yet that's not, that's not being addressed. Go over a couple more blocks and you get a little rain and three quarters of the, of the road is, is a lake. And it stays there for a considerable amount of time. East Mountain Road itself is getting in some areas, it's getting to be a mess. I just think there could have been a much better selection based on number one, need, and two, utilization. But I do hope that before anybody does anything, we have assurance that it's not on the list of the gas company for the lines to be changed. Thank you. Uh, one point I want to make on that. Um, Mrs. Reed, if we could request that um, 
if these streets are uh, on the list of the utility companies to be worked on, number one. And number two, I believe I did request um, the paving, uh, city pave cut inspector uh, to give us an analysis over the last, I can't remember how many years, but the, the city streets that have been paved and then uh, directly thereafter or shortly thereafter have been cut up. Um, and my third point is, it, I don't care what anybody tells me, the utility companies are not doing a good job with pave cuts and they're not doing a good job with um, the manhole covers. Because when you drive around the city, it is totally evident. In fact, I talked to a former city engineer from years ago who said he goes out and they are not being done correctly. So it is an enforcement issue. We've, I think everybody on council has mentioned this. I don't believe it's properly being enforced. Well, I, thank you. To, to that point, since we're talking about it, uh, two things. All the utilities are notified as part of the or ordinance. They should be notified prior to any paving that they can't get back in there for a five year period without paving it curb to curb. But I do believe that the existing ordinance has failed us. Uh, there's things that we can do in the ordinance. Because what, what I mentioned this once before, what the utility companies do is they go down the street and they put the main line in and they leave and they go down to the next neighborhood and they go down to the next neighborhood and do the same thing and repeat it all over the city. And then months later, they come back and put the laterals in and then months later, they pave the street curb to curb. You know, I feel like we should require them to do everything on that block or blocks immediately. Put the main line in, put the laterals in, pave and move on to the next one. So I think there's the things we need to do with the new ordinance, but I agree. This is one of the biggest complaints we get from anybody, anybody. I mean, over and over, every single day we're complaining about the utility company. So we need to get smarter. We need to revise the ordinance in a, in a better way. And we have to find a, because it, it is, these, these neighborhoods are like war zones. The roads are absolutely incredible. So uh, it could be done, but we have to get smarter. And, and, and I think we need to get back in a work session. And, but. Uh, Mr. Azuri and Mr. Postius, and if we need to do the ordinance over, we need, we need to do it over. I'm sorry, John, go ahead. And not to beat a dead horse, but two things to, to add to that. Um, the manhole covers are certainly one of the biggest problems. Main Avenue on West Side, which was done by the state, um, wasn't done properly, and it's still not done properly, and that was a state project to the point where they actually came in and repaired some of the manhole covers after the fact. And Councilman Evans made a great point about block by block. Um, in my neighborhood, there was a number of utility companies that were doing work. And as Councilman mentioned, that's exactly how it was done. Um, and streets were left open for months and months. And I would like to see something in a new ordinance that would prevent utilities for allowing, a, allowing winters to go by with these roads not fully repaired. Um, because it's much more dangerous in the winter. And you know, when the plows are going through, it makes it even worse. Um, Luzerne Street last year, again, a state road, uh, two years ago was a disaster for the winter. And um, in Westside, I know Sumner Avenue was exposed for months, probably six months. Um, so I just wanted to make those points. Well, and I think what's happening is we're allowing the utility companies to bid the jobs that way because it saves them money. It's not about saving them money. It's about getting the job done right for our citizens. So. Uh, that's why I think we can actually uh, resurrect the uh, ordinance and get it done right. Joan, you're up. <laughs> I'd hate to interrupt anybody. No, I, I fully concur uh, what Marie has said. Um, but you know, I'm fortunate. I no longer drive. Haven't had to drive a car in five years. So I don't have to worry about you know, paying for car repairs, but I do ride the bus, and I've seen many buses break down after hint pothole after pothole after pothole. So paving is important, and I, nobody's going to argue against that. But why do I get the feeling that the utilities, particularly the water company, um, doesn't like to talk to the municipality and share information? There should be a master plan in each of these utilities barring emergencies, but a master plan that they know what they have to upgrade based on, on the age and condition of their facilities, their infrastructure. And they should be working hand in glove with the city so that there are no surprises to the city 
and and the, and the utility gets the support they need from the municipality uh, when and where it has to happen. There should be talks going back and forth. So this business of doing the main line throughout the city, then coming back and doing the la laterals, that's hogwash. You know, I mean, and if their utility insists on doing it that way, they should be picking up the extra cost, not the taxpayer, not the rate payer. Okay, I mean, these are not good corporate citizens. Let's face it, and we're not holding their feet to the fire, either the general public or the city officials. You gotta, you've got to crack the whip on these people. And I don't know, maybe there needs to be more legislation either at the state level or at the municipal level telling them, you know, this is what you're going to do. And, and you don't go digging up our streets without our permission and without you having told us in advance. They are surprising you at every turn. They are. And, and why you let them continue to do it is beyond me. So the current mayor or the next mayor, please get a handle on this because all we're doing we're spending money on paving, which is a big dollar item, and we're wasting a significant portion of it because it get, keeps getting dug up. And I see no reason, other than the genuine emergency where a water main breaks, or something to that effect, or subsidence, there should be no problem. They should have a plan, and it goes in an orderly fashion. And we, and we marry our paving project into it, so we get the biggest bang for the buck. But right now, I think we're just flushing our, our uh, dollars down the sewer to our infamous sewer authority. Maybe that's what we're using to pay the lawyers, I don't know. But I support you doing this project, but I think you need to get a handle on these utilities, because they're, they're wagging your tail. They're the, they're the tail wagging the dog. Okay, yeah, and you're I, not in control of that. I agree. I think it's a situation where the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand enough, meaning the city and, and the utilities. Uh, so I would love to see this work session happen again with not only Mr. Hazori and Poshis, but uh, if council agrees, I would like to invite uh, the heads of the utility companies as well, because I think that would give us a really good understanding of what their plans are and how to incorporate their plans into what we want to do. Uh, because, yeah, it's silly to... Uh, to have to destroy what we work and pay so hard for to replace. And, you know, this situation is coming up more and more because we're actually in a position to pave more and more streets, where in the past we weren't in that position. Uh, but, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, and, you know, some of the roads, I, you know, I, we can all rattle them off, whether it, it was Collery before it got fixed or River Street or, or all of them. Uh, so I'm, I would really suggest that we invite uh, utility heads to uh, a work session as well. Uh, so we can we can merge our plans together. Um, one one distinction you have to make when you say utilities, you have to make a distinction between the water company and the gas company. Um, the water company is very receptive to working with the city. Um, the water company, uh, I can call the water company at any time. Uh, I've been back to Stafford Avenue. I would invite uh, instead of um, them coming here to council, I would suggest that council make a visit back to the Stafford Avenue plant. Um, they have a huge interactive board that represents the entire city. Um, it maps future projects, uh, current projects. It maps um, priorities by amount of uh, leaks that are called in. Uh, and for the most part, the water company has worked with the city in terms of um, what paving we're going to do and what projects they have to do. The gas company, on the other hand, is a different animal. Um, the gas company is not receptive to working with the city. Um, the gas company is not, not responsive to following the um, pave cut rules that are currently in place where each evening they're supposed to be fixed and replaced and the um, repairs are supposed to be done at a certain time. Um, the, um, they use a different vendor than the water company uses. Um, so I, I'm comfortable that for as best as the knowledge that the water company has, these streets are not going to be subject to water company uh, improvements the gas company I'm not so sure of. Uh, in case in point on Prescott Avenue. Prescott Avenue was paved and one week later someone requested a new gas line service. Um, and the, the gas company didn't want to dig it up but the people went to the PUC and the PUC said you have to give gas service to this home. So that's why that road had to be dug up. It, it was like one week after the street was finished. 
Um, the water company doesn't, or I'm sorry, the gas company doesn't know who's going to call them and ask for a new service. I think part of the problem on Music Street is new services going in, uh, people requesting it. So I don't think we'll ever get a uh, written agreement to say that we're not going to pave these, that we're not going to do work on these streets once they're paved. Uh, but as Mr. Evans cited, there are um, procedures and ordinances in place to provide a remedy if they do that. And that's where the city uh, has to enforce the ordinances, whether we have to improve it to enforce it or what, what do we have to do. But uh, I would recommend that uh, anyone on city council uh, call the water company. Uh, Mr. Hoover is my contact person there. Mr. Hoover, it's kind of like uh, in Dr. Strangelove, he showed me the big board where, where everything happens. It's quite a sophisticated operation that they have back there. And, and, and uh, I, I personally would not have any complaints. I don't have any complaints with the water company and, and what they're doing with that. I think we're back to you, Lori. Anyone else? I'm sorry. <clears throat> Seventh order. 7A, formerly 5H, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption. Resolution number 183, 2017, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Pensy Supply Incorporated for City of Scranton 2017 paving project. Emergency certificate attached. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Uh, before we adjourn, I have one comment I should have made earlier on um, since council came back. Um, we seem to have gotten away from written, written requests from constituents to answer questions. Um, this week, uh, Ms. Franis had sent me uh, several questions to be answered. Uh, Mrs. Reed and I reviewed the questions and we called Ms. Franis back and she got her answers. Uh, this evening, several questions were asked of council um, that either they weren't prepared to respond or they wanted to check their response. I really would suggest uh, Mrs. Reed is in the office five days a week. We all, uh, Mrs. Carrera is here. We all have email. Um, so if you really want the answers to the questions, instead of trying to play I got you or I tripped you up, please send them to council uh, before the meeting and we will, and we will answer them. Uh, this week with Mrs. Mrs. Reed and, uh, and I working with Ms. Franis, uh, everything was res resolved before the meeting this evening. It, it's, it just allows us to serve you better. If, if you want to play I got you, you can play I got you. If you want to get the answers to your questions, send them to us in writing. Uh, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.